You're listening to the Personal Development Through Martial Arts podcast, the podcast where the world's highest personal development experts and martial arts masters come together to empower and inspire you to become your strongest self and live the life that you truly want. Join host Bogdan Rosho, author, public speaker, and the founder of the first personal development through martial arts school in the world in the podcast where you become the hero. In this interview, we're talking with George Fury about how you can market and scale your martial arts school. This is for you if you're thinking about teaching martial arts, making it a career, and this is also for you if you are already an established martial arts teacher and you'd like to take your school to the next level. Let's get into it. Man, I'm getting nervous. Every time I start these podcasts, I'm, I'm nervous. I don't know why, you know? Do you, get that, do you get that feeling of nervousness when you start yours? Yeah, uh, not, so, not so much anymore, but yeah, yeah there's, always a, there's always the uncertainty, especially because I know that I don't prepare. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah exactly. I'm relying, I'm relying on, on being in the moment. <laughs> and um, yeah, so... I hope the moment. I love that. I love that because I I do that as well. I prefer that as well. We're here with uh, George Furry, and uh, I'm I'm hope I'm not butchering uh, your name, right? Uh, George is um, from Martial Arts Media. He specializes in uh, helping martial arts schools uh, with uh, with their marketing and uh, having a greater impact. And it's really I'm really excited to talk and. get deeper into his story and give you guys some awesome value okay george how are you i'm doing great how are you excellent actually what time is it right now you said it's like 8 p.m 8 p.m 8 p.m yeah it's 2 p.m over here in uh in bucharest romania cool um so tell us a bit about yourself uh, for the people who don't know exactly what you're doing and how you're helping uh, pe- people give us a bit of um an intro a backstory okay how far do you want me to go um like how does how did this craziness start you know how did what you're doing today how did it all begin okay so uh, i guess a a short story um I'm, i'm from south africa originally i immigrated to perth australia about 11 years ago and um my son was born here enrolled him into martial arts at a young age uh, probably four going on to five and i mean i'd never done martial arts in my life it was probably not ever on the priority list right um i was into surfing i was into playing drums and computers and technology and and everything and uh yeah just at the time enrolled my son into martial arts uh, he started training i was just I, I guess i was really impressed just with the development of how he was progressing through mm-hmm. martial arts. Mm-hmm. And at that point, still didn't do any training. I was heavily involved into online marketing and digital digital mm-hmm. marketing mm-hmm. as such. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I can't recall how the – I think I was talking to his, his sensei at the time, and we were just talking about things that they were doing for marketing their school. And um, I, I thought I'd – you know, just go see them and say, look, you know, here's a couple of things that you can, you know, maybe do to tweak your marketing. And, uh, was it and, like, and that's, I guess, just... Was it like one of those facepalm moments when you hear like what other people do, are doing with their marketing and you're like, oh my God, no, don't, don't, don't do that? Um, maybe, maybe a little bit, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, they, they were running well and a really sophisticated organization and... Um, I, I guess what I was trying to to help them with was really, you know, all the values and everything that they had in the school to really bring that through um, through their marketing, which you know, through their digital, you know, their, their online profile that yes. their on, online profile represented the values and everything that they did so well at the school. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was it was just really offering them some advice. Uh, we got talking and. Uh, the, the one thing led to the next. I started helping them with their marketing. Um, it became an ongoing thing. Um, somewhere along the line there, I asked myself the question, why am I not doing this martial arts thing? Yeah. Um, 
you know, I was 36 years old thinking, oh, I probably missed the boat with this. Um, and I decided to give it a go, fell in love with it. Um, it was just sort of the right time in my life to mm-hmm. take something on. Martial arts kept going and kept going, started doing the marketing, you know, the marketing kept growing. And then at one point it sort of reached a point, well, hang on, if, uh, if this is what I love doing, yes. the martial arts, and I've, I've finally found a industry that I'm passionate about, one, it just connected to and make this my life. Mm-hmm, and that mm-hmm. was really how a lot of started. And, and here I am speaking to you. <laughs> how long have you been training martial arts now? Well, I'm, I'm probably going into my, it'll be my fifth year this year. First year. Awesome. Fifth. Fifth. Fifth, fifth. fifth year. Fifth year. Yeah, yeah. What, what style are you training in? So it, it started with um, Zendo Kai, which is an Australian martial art, okay. and which evolved into, which evolved into Muay Thai. Mm, and, and I did that for a while until I realized um, I, could, I, I could not take any knocks to the head. I had a bit of an accident about 13 years ago. I had a hemorrhage, big cut to the head, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. – um, I went to go see the neurologist. I was a bit hesitant about the martial arts sparring just because I, you know, I know, but knew about my past. And um, he looked, he took one look at me and said, look, don't get hit in the head. Yeah. <laughs> Which is obviously a tricky thing when you're doing martial arts. I mean, sometimes you're going to get hit, hit in the head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I tried to continue the same style just, and every time, you know, in a sparring situation, asking people, don't punch in the head. And um, it lasted a little bit, but it just felt too. I'm not giving it my full effort. Yes, and and that got me to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm-hmm. and um, I, I'd almost say I had to force myself to like it. Yeah, because I knew, that, you know, I needed something that was not going to be the the contact side. Um, but very soon, I mean, I I fell in love with it once mm-hmm. I once I understand stood the concept and the just the difference with with the, the art of grappling. Um, that's that's where I am. So yeah, hundred percent jujitsu. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of people are training jujitsu now. I think um, it, it's become incredibly popular. Yeah, absolutely. So, are you helping them as well with uh, with their marketing in their school? Um, not, not, not at this point. No, mm-hmm. um, we have done a few things together, um, but yeah, it's it's uh, the, it's, it's more of a. I guess it's a, a slightly different club to you know the the clients that I that I do work with. Um, awesome school, uh, mm-hmm. just a bunch of passionate guys training jujitsu. Um, not too much emphasis on growing growing the business. Just uh, yeah, really a place where guys connect, get on the mats, and learn jujitsu and roll. But you also have a podcast yourself. Right, and you're interviewing uh, yes. martial artists all over the world. How did that start, or how did you get that idea? Yeah, so it, it's it's something that I that I did previously in uh, in other industries um, before before Facebook was a big thing, and uh, you know Facebook Live and all this. I, I started doing uh, two way podcast video interviews, actually on the same platform still that I'm that I'm using right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just found it, uh, at that, at that point I was gr- trying to grow a global business, connecting with people all over the world. Mm-hmm. And the podcast was just a good way to really start relationships. For, yes. for me, it's, it's, it's about, it's, it's a good way to just connect with people, um, learn, create good content. Other people get value. Relationships are formed. Um, sometimes actually business partners, come from it yes um but a lot of times it's just about it's, it's for me it's just about creating content building relationships and uh that's always been uh, you know a, a, a big thing for me with with marketing is value first offers second um and if you can and that's that's a huge <laughs> huge concept that's a yeah concept. and and i think I, I think you can go overboard with both mm-hmm. um you know s- some people will watch Gary Vaynerchuk or, or something and they'll yeah. they'll see that element and and try and model it yeah. and and focus just on the content creation and you know that's what we got to do but then they forget the other side where you've actually got to make the offers you actually yeah, have absolutely. to have absolutely. a sales process to to back that up absolutely. otherwise i mean you're just creating content 
you know, regarding the uh, the podcast and regarding what you said, I feel a lot of people are going into this uh, content created creation trap, but without having an actual product to uh, to uh, you know to make the offer. And I was talking about it with uh, Radu as well, Radu Antonio, that in from the previous interview, and he was saying, you know, people get into this contribution idea, which is amazing, which is great, but contribution alone might not help you get to the life that you want because you might be contributing and helping your neighbor set up his painting or you know paint his house and then you're contributing this and that so everything needs to be strategic um what would you recommend for somebody who wants to make martial arts a uh, wants to make it a living and not just um make ends meet but make it a career what do you feel are the most important aspects that they should know starting out okay so i'm going to come from this from a slightly different angle um you know because one thing when i uh, when i give advice i'm always um, straight up with where my expertise is strong and where it's not mm -hmm. and because i don't personally run a martial arts school um and i've always looked at the marketing perspective and growth of a business from that perspective um that's that's where my my expertise will, will, will come from. Mm -hmm. So look, uh, the, the, the first thing, the first, the, I guess the biggest obstacle I see martial arts school owners have is really um, acknowledging what their true value is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I find that a lot of people want to, want to compete on price. Yes. And competing on price is a race to the bottom. <laughs> um, when, <laughs> when you, when you, when you charge the lowest fee and that's your selling point, there's always going to be someone that's going to undercut you. There's always going to be someone that's going to deliver a worse service yes. and charge less. And it just devalues you. It devalues your time. It's going to devalue your motivation as well, because if you're getting paid peanuts, um, I mean, your, your passion's going to have to be super strong. And, and then you're this, not you're not doing your clients a favor either because with they they're feeling that they're not putting in the effort to pay for what for, for the value that you're giving they're not going to put in the effort to use what they're getting right and i was i'm referring back to i think it was episode i could have been episode 19 on my on my podcast mm -hmm. uh, kevin Blundell said to me um, you know the minute you charge a dollar yeah. Then you are in business and you've got an obligation to fulfill yes. a service. I mean, look, if you wanna there's nothing wrong with running a free school and, and doing it as a passion and and providing it like that. Mm -hmm. But the minute you charge money, then you've got an obligation to fulfill and you're not a free service anymore. Yes. And from that point, then you've got to really assess, well, if somebody is paying a dollar fee, what can you provide with that dollar fee? Mm -hmm. Um and if, if if what's on your mind is scraping scraping dollars to survive, and you know how how am I going to pay this rent? You're not doing yourself a service. You're not actually doing a service to the people that are actually paying you money. Yeah. So yeah. so a, a big thing I think is just to really assess your value. And you know because I came from uh, very late into martial arts, I know martial arts for me it. It changed my life in a really good way. It transformed my life, and and I think when when guys like yourself and you know instructors that have been training so long maybe get a little detached from how much value there is yes. for that person that actually gets started because it's just so part of your DNA. That's what you you every day you do martial arts. But for someone that's maybe struggling with something in life or something else is happening that's um, got them on the wrong path or whatever it is that's an obstacle and martial arts comes into their life and actually changes it. Yes. That's, that's a big thing. And it's not to be taken lightly. And for me, you know, like if I think, you know, I, I can recall when I was a kid mentioning martial arts to my parents, and, you know, I want to do martial arts. And yeah. No, we don't have money and so forth. And people talk about, you know, sales being a bad thing, but you know what? I wish somebody sold my parents on the idea. Um, you know, I wish there was an instructor that could have said, look, this, this is the benefits this kid will get, you know, from year on end, if yeah. he commits to this journey. 
Yeah. That, that actually reminds me of uh, this story that my marketing mentor was uh, was sharing. When he was a fitness, um, he was a fitness pro in the beginning. And he had this guy who was overweight and he was risking being uh, becoming a diabetic. Or I think he was a diabetic already. But he was reluctant to start his um, his training and start working with um, uh, with my uh, marketing mentor. And he said, yeah, you know, let me think about it. I'll see what I can do and, uh, and stuff like that. And he said, yeah, okay, I understand. So he didn't, he didn't call back. He didn't sign up for his uh, fitness training. And one year later, he died. And that was like a huge, huge impact on, um, on my marketing mentor. He said, you know what? It was, in, in a sense, he felt guilty because he didn't do everything that he could to inspire this person to take action and save his own life. So... It's very similar to this, um, to what we were saying before. When you're reluctant to, you know, to 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 see the value that you're giving as a martial arts instructor, you're not really doing anybody a favor. Definitely, definitely. That's and and I would see that as the, I guess, as the first thing of of just recognizing your value, recognizing this is you know this is what it's worth. It's going to change someone's life. Um, and don't take that lightly, you know, in a conversation of getting someone on board and, yeah, getting involved. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, so let's say that, okay, you, you know your value, you know what you're doing, then what, what would be the next step? Okay, so, so again, coming from the, from the, marketing, from the marketing angle, uh, if you... If, if you know your value, you know, let's say you, you're getting it started, you know, you've, let's say you're at the point at, you've got a few students, mm-hmm. you, you, you start, you, you've got, you've got things in motion. Uh, a good way to, you, you're going to have to learn some marketing. You know, there's, uh, there's always, there's always people you can hire. Um, you know, you can always get other people involved, but, you know, there's uh, one mentor once told me there's there's two things that you should not outsource mm-hmm. in your business, and that is marketing strategy and the old term of a checkbook. I mean, we don't have those anymore. Yeah. But you know, the money manage the money management and the marketing side. And I guess a pitfall I can I, I see a lot of people fall into is um, the the first thing that a lot of school owners say to me when before we we engage with <coughs> excuse me with any business is they just want it done for them you know mm-hmm. just just do it all yeah um and while that can be done it's it's a very dangerous thing to do because if you if you're not on board with any strategy whatsoever then you're always going to be at the mercy of someone else yes to run your business and I think a big, and this sort of goes hand in hand with what's happening on the internet right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very easy to follow the trend and forget about the foundations. Right. And and what I mean by that is um, a lot of people are platform dependent. And normally it's one platform given Facebook. Yeah. And Facebook is super hot. Facebook is great. It delivers the leads. But I would bet that if there's a lot of school owners that if they had to lose their account today, their business would go down with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so being single point sensitive in business is a is a dangerous thing. Dan Kennedy always used to say, um, you know, the most dangerous number in business is one. Um, you got one, <laughs> you got nothing. Yes, but you got two. You can actually recover. Yeah. So. So taking that perspective from a marketing side of if you're going to engage in marketing, get on board with a strategy mm-hmm. and a strategy that is not going to, that your life doesn't depend on it. Right. Meaning if it had to fall away tomorrow, that you've got some backup. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And the way we work with backups, you know, is having great foundations. Um, good website. You know, a lot of people would say, well, you don't need a website anymore. You've got social media. Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember 10 years ago, people said that about MySpace. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's always trends. And look, there's, there's, there's no doomsday, 
there's no doomsday and there's you know Facebook's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. But you've got to you've got to take into account that you've got to set up your own assets and your own structure. That you know if things had to change and fluctuate, that you're not at the mercy of another company's vision and where they might take it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, th- I feel that a lot of people are uh, moving towards Instagram right now, uh, away from Facebook and more towards Instagram and uh, towards Instagram stories. They're like the hottest thing at the moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. So what do you feel is this good foundation that you can build solid marketing on? Okay, so there's, there's in, in a broad spectrum, you've got, you've got short-term strategies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then more long term long term strategies. Now a lot of this would depend on obviously your budget. Right. So if you're starting out, most school owners when they start out are skimming the budget. Yeah. Um so but I guess you've got to venture into both. And this is why um, understanding your value is important because mm-hmm. if you charge if you charge minimal fees, it's gonna be very hard to take a portion of that and actually have a marketing cost that you can commit to yeah advertising yeah, yeah um which is which is something that you would need to do so look the quickest way of obviously to get traction is is paid advertising that being through facebook um through google ads that getting traffic either to a website you know or through different means of work working things on facebook mm-hmm. um going in with that is being very clear on a good offer so uh, a good offer with a single message of what people get as the first step into starting their martial arts journey. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be in the form of a paid trial or a maybe a free trial or maybe a package deal. You know that's that's structured as a as maybe a, a try a try out program. Um, so that that'll be a, that that goes hand in hand with a paid structure. Mm-hmm. If you on a completely bare minimum, no budget, a good thing to get into is content marketing. Mm -hmm. And content creation, you know, for a martial martial arts instructor would be, I mean, the the most powerful medium being video. Mm -hmm. Um, Getting into video, getting comfortable with with a camera, um, I I guess being comfortable with not letting go of perfection, being cool about making mistakes. And I guess getting, getting into a bit of a structure and, Building an audience through creating content, content through the means of video, uh, articles, if that's your preferred method. But for most people, video is is the easiest method when it, you know, when you when you get that in motion. How important do you feel that it, it is to have like this ideal client in mind or this ideal student in mind, and actually make all your marketing communication towards that one person? It's it's everything. Yeah. Mm. It's 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 everything. So yeah, and that's that's missing obviously a big step. Going going hand in hand with I guess the offer creation. Mm-hmm. If you create the offer, you're you're always thinking of the one person, the ideal person they are. Um, you know, as referred to in a lot of marketing as the ideal avatar. Yes. You know, this person, awesome. his name's John. He's thirty five. He's building a bit of a profile towards the actual person that you attract. Yeah. And whether that's for the offer creation or the content creation, um, it's really good to have that one person in mind. And I know when if I create a marketing video, I'm always I'm always thinking of that one person that I'm that I'm actually talking to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and or that one person that asked me this particular question and how I can answer that in in the best way possible. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are being very general because at least that's what that was my case when I started out. I felt like, you know what, my Wing Chun is perfect for everyone. Like everyone should be doing Wing Chun. Yes and no. Like like not everyone wants to do Wing Chun, right? They they'd rather use their time for something else and um not everyone wants to invest in themselves in in, in this sense. Yeah. So the moment I actually started focusing on one person, that that's actually the part, the paradox. By focusing on one person, it just got more students. Yeah, and I guess if you if you're finding hard to find out who that person is, mm-hmm. then start backwards and start with a person you don't want, um, mm. because yeah. that's you know that can be the killer as well. If you get if you're attracting the wrong student um, and you're creating the wrong culture, 
that can cause a lot more pain for you, for all the other students. Yes. So, yeah, if you, if you can start with the elimination, mm -hmm. if you're not clear on what you want, that'll get you soon enough to, to what it is that you want. Yeah, you know, when I when I set up this uh, because our school it's like it's a personal development through martial arts uh, program, just like this uh, podcast is. So we're offering the value of training physically, and also training your 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 mindset, so that you're a lot more a lot better prepared for challenges in life, like getting a promotion, like uh, communicating a lot better. And I always say that if you just come for the martial arts. You're not the right person. You shouldn't be there because you're not you're not using everything that you're getting. So, in my case, you know the people that come to my school, they really need to see the value in in learning how to better their lives and to contribute in other people's lives um, as well, and not just coming to to hit themselves over the head. And how how do you go about that? Do you build that into your into your classes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We basically have like uh, conversations every training session on how we use and apply the ideas outside of the school. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, um, what was like? What's your favorite marketing story? What's your favorite case study of somebody that you helped out with their marketing and the? Uh... Okay. Um... I guess I'll I'll start I'll start out from just starting. Um, initially, initially when I started helping schools through digital marketing, it was still a bit of a it it wasn't like it is today. Right. Um, meaning, most schools weren't that active on doing ads on Facebook, doing ads on Google, um, and I come from selling digital products, so it was a lot of there was a lot of things that worked in that realm mm -hmm. and making adapting it to the martial arts space was, you know, was always a, a bit of a gamble. Sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of fails and then you celebrate the wins. Um, I, I guess the first was starting out with a, with a email campaign when a uh, school I was working with needed, um, they were, they were trying to launch a new program and a few things weren't happening. Mm -hmm. And, and the manager asked me and said, "Look, we we gotta we gotta try something." And um, I remember a a email structured email campaign we did, kind of with a, a bit of a I guess flash sale mindset. Okay. Um, and it it in the four days that we ran it, there were uh, I think twenty nine new student signups, mm, nice. um, which was which was awesome. And it it was it was a reassurance that okay this this worked. Um, and then taking that strategy and, and, and evolving it a little further um, with the same type of mindset, meaning we create an offer, and, and this is in our um, in our Martial Arts Media Academy program, we've got, uh, we, we help school owners with training, mm -hmm, uh, with mm -hmm, marketing mm -hmm. education. Yes. And we put together this, uh, we put together a training based on this concept and just taking a step further. And the whole concept goes to creating a, a unique offer, uh -huh. a unique offer with a strict deadline that it's only offered for a certain amount of time. Yes. And doing that, I guess you've got to be careful. You, 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 you don't want to do this all the time because people will, your audience will become numb to it, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, either numb to it or they'll just be waiting for your next special offer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to run this maybe perhaps four times a year. Um, and we stretch it out now with a with an offer – um, that goes runs about over two weeks. It's got a strict deadline. Um, maybe work with a couple of timers and things on the, the landing pages, and um, it's it's gotten good results. Um, uh, I did a actually did a a case study with Paul Velt, who was on your last podcast. Yeah, uh, we ran a campaign with him that generated about ninety six paid trials in two weeks over Christmas time. That's very nice. That's very nice. So, so yeah, and, and look, it's it's always good to uh, mention these results, mm -hmm. um, and and that's what school owners always want to hear. And sometimes it's dangerous because they say, "Hey, cool," because you raise expectations. To, yeah. Yes, um, and 
and one thing to consider is the, the, the pre-marketing and the brand positioning that goes with all that. And, you know, to get to that level of campaigns and, and generate all these, you know, paid trial signups on, on demand, mm-hmm. um, it can take a lot of tweaking. And tweaking yes. of really getting your offer right, building up your audience, um, knowing what works, following following a system to to really track your marketing and really build upon that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I, I guess the most value I've really seen is, is the long-term effect of uh, committing to a content strategy, yes. um, providing good value, and then combining that with with a form of paid advertising, whether that be Facebook, Google, et cetera. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I feel that uh, I, I went through that as well. You know, these expectations of doing stuff quickly and uh, these quick fix solutions that actually, you know, they, they take more out of you than they give. Yeah, I, I feel like committing to something on long, long term is the, the way to go. What do, you, what do you feel are like the most common mistakes that people make when um, uh, managing martial arts schools or trying to grow martial arts schools? Again, so just just from from the marketing side, mm-hmm. um, you know, as, as I don't don't run a school specifically, so really from from the marketing side, look, there's 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 a few things when it comes to the digital platforms. Right. Um, one is one is just committing to the one platform mm-hmm. and and devoting to the one as as we discussed, really being yes. single point sensitive. Um, the a, a big thing I discuss in one of my trainings is uh, the customer journey. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with every and, and this is a, a, a Salesforce.com stat for every trend, every interaction. There's going to be about six to eight interactions with the prospect before a conversion happens, um, and that conversion could be a walk-in, it could be picking up the phone, it could yes. be an online inquiry. So when you look at all the different interactions, then you got to you got to look at the whole spectrum. And, you know, if you think of the last thing you bought, you know, mm-hmm. you might, your, your first point of contact might be um, a friend tells you about it. Yes. And that's cool. So they, they tell you and it's a referral. So you, you, you're quite on board, but then you're not sure. So you might head over to Google and then you say, like, well, okay, what's this really about? So you might type the product name and review. Yeah. And, and, and secretly, I think, in your mind, you're looking for, you're looking, you're looking for the negatives. You're looking yes. for the sometimes you the are, reasons you, why you, are looking, you shouldn't buy it. Exactly. Um, so when you look at it from that that perspective, you know if someone's going to search for you on Facebook, um, they might not be ready mm-hmm. to make that purchase. Yes. So go, taking this a bit further, um, there's there's five different levels of a. And, and this, this is generally marketing, but five different stages of awareness yes. where a prospect enters your realm and gets gets started. There's going to be the completely cold prospect, mm-hmm. and they know zero about martial arts. Um, there's going to be the prospect that they got a problem, mm-hmm. but they haven't linked martial arts to the solution yet. Yes, but they've got a problem. Yes, and then you're going to have someone that they know about martial arts. And they know it can potentially solve a problem, but they don't know where to, who's going to provide the solution. And then there's going to be the one step up in the prospect that they've probably done a bit of their research and they know about martial arts, they know about your school, but they still don't know if it's right for them. For them. Mm-hmm. 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 And then you're going to get the hot prospect. They know about you. They, they know that it's for them. They're pretty much sold. They're just really looking for the right offer that's going to take them over the line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's, that's really the biggest, the biggest step is the over the line. So when you look at your marketing from that point, you got to think, okay, well, there's these different levels of awareness of how people are going to perceive martial arts. Um, some going to be serious. I'm not, some going to need a bit more convincing. Mm-hmm. And what is your marketing doing to facilitate the different stages? Yes, because if your first point of entry is just always an offer and always an ad, then you kind of got to train that person 
to just be responsive to the offer and the ad. Um, and look, this can go twofold because it could work great. Um, but you've got to look at you've got to look at all the aspects of you know getting a student in with just the right offer can mm-hmm. be great, but they might not be a student long term um, because you've got them in on the wrong perception mm-hmm. as such. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so when you look at your marketing, you you just and especially from an online perspective, some people are going to be ready today, and some people are going to take a year. Yes, and. And and that's the person that sometimes walks in and says, "Hey, I've been, you know, I've been seeing you guys around. They don't know where, but I've seen seeing you guys around. Um, well, I've heard about you, and you know, I'm, I'm I'm ready to do this thing because people just procrastinate. You know, sometimes they mm-hmm. do. So so if that's the the question, and um, I, I'm I'm jumping around you, but this reminds me of something that uh, Dean Jackson uh, mentioned in a training was that uh, prospect. His his whole approach, and this was for the real estate, but you know, hopefully, uh, as a martial arts school owner, you can you can learn from this and adapt from this. Mm-hmm. But his whole strategy was um, that he knows that when a prospect, when he speaks to a prospect, they are going to be ready to join. They're going to ready to do business within twelve months. Right, and that's the majority of the people he's speaking to. That's a yes. good eighty ninety percent of the people he speaks to are going to be ready in night. Ni- in 12 months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and there's going to be 10% that are ready to do business now. Yes. But the way he goes about his marketing though, is he caters to the 90% because the 10% will jump on board anyway. Yes. So by focusing on the majority of the people that aren't going to join is, is marketing is structured in a way that caters for the long, caters for them, caters for people that aren't joining. And, the people that are ready to jump on board, mm-hmm. jump on board. Cool. So do you feel that a lot of people are focusing too much on the 10% instead of the 90% and they're missing out, they're losing, they're kind of losing the game because of that? Um, it, it depends. It could depend on many factors, right? It can be t- depend on your location, your reach, um, what's available in your area, competition, um, there's 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 many factors at play. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if you're in a big market, you can just put hot offers in front of people on Facebook, and it works. Yes, awesome. You know that's that's a good strategy. Um, you know, we've worked with a with with a few clients where they got the same business, the same the same loc- well, just different locations, but same franchise, school franchise, and marketing works in one location and it doesn't in the other. Yes, so. There's always going to be a difference in market demand, um, yeah. So, so there could be a lot of factors. So, look, the, the best way for yourself is to is to really, I guess, test, mm-hmm. um, commit to commit to something, learn about it, learn about a market, get get on board with a marketing strategy, and and take it from there. If you're looking at surviving long term in the game, um, you know, if you look at any authority in any in any field, mm-hmm. it's always, you know, if you look at the word authority, the word author is in that. And I don't mean that by necessarily creating a book, um, but in content creation, if you look at the Jamie Olivers of the world and, uh, you know, people that are really positioned as the authority, it was all done in a form of value-driven content. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, it's it's always a winning strategy. Unfortunately, it's a very long-term strategy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's Take time to really build your audience. If you if you need faster results, then yeah, the 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 paid ad strategy is is definitely the way to go. I think it's very important, you know, and something that I'm learning more than ever right now. It's very important to fall in love with with the process, with the journey, instead of just um, going for these uh, quick results. I mean, if you just love people and you love what you do and you love helping out then you don't care that it takes like two years or you you want to do it for the rest of your life right you don't really care exactly how long it takes mm, mm, mm. yeah and yeah. also be strategic 100%, 100%, about it 100 percent. um i mean it's it's all in the journey like i say for mine it's 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 a bit of a different journey to to the customers i speak to mm-hmm. um but 
it's it's all on the same purpose at the end of the day. I love martial arts. You know, that's that's my life. Yeah. Um, helping the industry that I'm actually part of is, you know, that's that's what that's what drives me at the end of the day. Um, otherwise, I would be, who knows, working with real estate agents or 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 somewhere else. But I mean, this is this is where I feel I feel home. Yeah. Um, are you still yeah. are you still selling digital products or is this like uh, your one hundred percent focus? One hundred percent focus uh, martial arts. We we develop martial arts websites. Um, that's a, a big component for us on setting up the foundations. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's it's it was the, the the reason we started developing websites is f firstly because I had the skill set to do it, um, but really just. I, um, I don't know how to put it nicely, but just frustrated with the level of quality and that gets delivered. Yes. Um, or, you know, in general, a, a website is a very, it's a very easy thing for anybody to do. Um, and all websites are not created equal. Mm -hmm. um, and coming from a computer background, computer programming background, I know that it's two completely different skill sets. Um, there's a technical side, which yes. most people can do when they can build a website. But then there's the strategic side. And the strategic strategic side is creating a compelling message, compelling offer, taking you as a school owner and extracting your values, your strengths, and turning that into a valid sales proposition mm -hmm. that's going to attract the right student for you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's an art mm -hmm. form in that, yes, um, which your high school kid that's 16 years old charging you 500 bucks is not is not going to be able to do and see, and that that takes a lot of testing and tweaking. Yes. Um, so the website building came from uh, clients wanting us to do Google AdWords, and the first thing we look at is always, do you have the foundations to facilitate that? Otherwise, marketing is going to be an expensive journey, mm -hmm. um, and that's normally the conversation killer. All right, we want to do Google AdWords, right? Let's look at the website. Okay, let's let's fix this first, yes. and then we can look at the AdWords, the AdWords later. So, so that's really where it started. Um, Google AdWords as a service again was was something I learned um, selling my first digital product, um, which was the best thirty seven dollars I've ever made in my entire life because I was trying this digital marketing thing. It's, it's probably it's, it was about two thousand and seven, yeah. Um, and I bought about every course and everything I could learn about digital marketing, and I was throwing money left, right, and center. Yeah. And I'd, I think I'd actually burned to the last $300 that I was prepared to spend. And I was on, I think it was on my last $20 of ad spend and I, I got the $37 commission. Yeah. yeah and yeah. on my next $32, I, I made another sale. And that, that sort of just restored my confidence and, uh, and got going. It's an amazing um, feeling. I, I remember the first time I yeah. wrote like ebooks and I sold like uh, I, I sold my first ebook. It's like this feeling of waking up with money in uh, in your account is just like out of nowhere. It's it's amazing. Sorry, I cut you off. I, mean, I apologize. Yeah, no, it's no, it's all good. I mean, it, it can be a dollar. I mean, that dollar is the it's it's the the realization of somebody in a different country can send you money that's never met you <laughs> and. Uh, facilitate so so all the services we provide has really been out of a necessity to, well it was really born out of how can i best help the school develop and it was it was built upon that um mm -hmm. firstly myself and then employing a team to help to help facilitate um so we provide the websites we provide done for you marketing services mm -hmm. through adwords mm -hmm. and facebook um and then for school owners starting out we created the martial arts media academy which is Really, everything that we've done, um, that we've done and applied and tested, that's worked, and then we put that into a program, uh, a coaching program, a done with you coaching program, where yeah, you can basically learn all the strategies that we've used and apply that in your business. Excellent. Where can people, um, you know, get more information or make their first steps in this sense? Okay. Cool. Um, well. For if, if you if you want to know more about us, uh, martialartsmedia.com, mm -hmm. uh, a good place to start uh, from the digital marketing side is, I, I guess, really getting educated with a good strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, the more you're on board with a strategy that complements the different, you know, I was talking about a customer journey and six to eight interactions and there's all these platforms. And look, it's, it can be super confusing, it can be overwhelming, um, and it can throw you off track in your business. And especially if you're a martial arts school owner, you've got that whole business component to manage. Now you've still got to do this marketing side and be educated. So it's good to get on board with a strategy. So, you know, the way we look at it is slightly old school of content creation and, and working that, mm -hmm. but then also working the short-term methods as discussed with paid advertising and I guess really making them all gel in one strategy. So um, I've got a, a, a webinar recording that we, that we run every week. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's about about 90 minutes. Um, it's well worth the content. Um, there's real value in you know, with everything that we do, um, how to work the different platforms, how to structure your website better for conversions, how what to you, leverage content marketing. Yeah. What do you feel would be the number one benefit of somebody attending the webinar? I'd say the clarity. Um, mm -hmm. clarity of what to do, what to do next. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to go the content route, how you should go about that. Mm -hmm. If you're going to commit to ads or, you know, plan out your website, what exactly you need, what exactly you need, how you can structure it for better conversions. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And having the, having the foundations right can help you down the line. It's sometimes not the sexiest conversation that people want to have, yeah. but it's the essential one. It's the essential one that, that benefits you long-term. Um, yeah, so uh, benefit-wise, I guess clarity, direction of what to do next, how to make all these platforms gel in a way and get you moving forward with, with your business. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, guys, I'll post a link in uh, the description where you can um, connect with, uh, with George and uh, also sign up for the webinar. I absolutely recommend you you do and you learn as much as you can about this uh, topic because you're you know we're talking about helping your helping yourself and helping other people become their best version. So it's not something that you, I, I would take lightly. You know you need to study this stuff like university. I created um, just a shorter link if if uh, if I can mention it if that's okay. Sure. Um, it's just martialartsmedia.com forward slash book done. Yeah, B-O-G-D-A-N? Yes. Did I say your name right this time? You did. I'm going to ask you every time I say it. Okay. <laughs> you did. All right, so just martialartsmedia.com forward slash book done. Awesome. I'll post the link anyway in, in the description, guys. Um, George, what's one question that you'd like to ask um, everyone who uh, has been listening in uh, into our conversation? <coughs> one question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your... What is the one thing that you would like to achieve in 2018? Mm, that's a great question. I love that. I love that. Awesome, guys. Um, <clears throat> let us know in the comment section. Looking forward to uh, reading your, uh, your uh, goals for the year. And thank you so much, George, for your time, for your wisdom. I wish we would have had this conversation like when I started out because I made it... You know, you, you would have face palmed yourself regularly if you just, just heard my stories. My marketing. It's stories. all good. I mean, you know, we. I, I think I think many of instructors have face palmed. Uh, you know, my martial arts journey and idiotic, well, <laughs> dumb questions. Um, so yeah, it's you know, it's 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 all a journey. You know, martial arts is a journey. Getting the marketing right, it, it's all a journey. You know, it's every day I'm learning, I'm reading, I'm investing into strategies and coaches and, and everything. So, yeah, it, it goes hand in hand with, with the martial arts. It's uh, um, the, the face palm is normally good because it, it, it sets the record straight for me and knowing, hang on, um, I'm not communicating clearly enough. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm missing something in the delivery. Yeah. Um, so I like to ref. I, I I never. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see it as a face palm. I would like. Oh, hang on. Um, what am I doing to cause the face palm? The face palm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
absolutely awesome guys um i hope you enjoyed this uh this conversation this conversation that i absolutely uh did and um i hope that it will help you help more people and uh you know in enable you to take your your school to the next level okay thank you so much awesome thanks for having me Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening in. I hope this was super valuable for you. And also to get notified every time I post a new video on this YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to have unstoppable self-confidence without seeming arrogant, there's a link in the description where you can download the free report. And if you want me to personally help you with your martial arts training so that you get more speed, power, precision, stability, and have a deeper understanding of your body, you go ahead and you check the link for our online academy which you will find of course in the description and please go ahead and give us a rating on itunes it does help and it is very much appreciated i'll see you next time